What's going on, movie fans? My name is Michael Weir. I love talking about movies, and it is the end of January 2024. Can't believe we've already gone through an entire month of movies. That's crazy to me. But I saw seven of them in the month of January, and I'm going to rank them from worst to best. Did these last year at the end of each month. I talked about how I liked the movies, disliked the movies, put them in ranked order for you guys, and you guys seem to like that. You guys interacted with a lot of that. And so just like last year, I would like to keep that interaction going. If you've seen any of these movies, I'd love to know your thoughts and comments on them. Or if you've seen multiple of the movies that are on this list, well, I would love for you to put a ranked list of worst to best in the comment section down below as well. And finally, guys, if this is the first time you're finding my channel and you like movie reviews, Blu-ray talk, I've got a ton of Blu-rays back there. I love talking about those. Or you like ranked lists just like we're doing here today, well, I've got a ton of that content on my channel, and I would invite you to subscribe so that you get the content notified as soon as it comes out. With all that said, let's rank January of 2024 from worst to best. Before I get into the actual list, guys, I have done full reviews for all of these movies on my channel and YouTube shorts for these. So if you want my quick out of the theater reaction, those are on my channel. And if you want my full thoughts on any of these movies, all of those are on my channel as well. Let's get into my ranked list at number seven. The worst of the worst this month has to be Founders Day. Founders Day is the epitome of a January horror movie where the studio has no faith in the film. They drop it in January and when you see it, you understand exactly why that happened. This is a movie about a small town having a heated mayoral race and there's a serial killer on the loose. And just looking at that description, not a bad idea. And when you see the look of the villain or the serial killer in this movie, that's pretty cool too. Where's a judge's gown has a gavel has an old time wig the gavel is a knife that comes out of the bottom of it so a very cool look and an interesting idea but just the execution of this movie was horrible the dialogue was very poorly written the acting was executed terribly you get through this movie by the end of it i just wanted it to end walked out of the theater with a headache i couldn't believe that i sat through that founder's day is the worst thing to come out in horror in a long time and it is the worst movie of january let's move on to number six at number six guys we have iss which stands for the international space station and it's a movie about three astronauts and three cosmonauts all spending time together on the international space station when nuclear war breaks out below it's an interesting concept and when i heard that space was going to be on the big screen i was there day one because i will watch any movie set in deep space it's just or just space in general not deep space it's like right above the earth but you get the idea i was excited about seeing space on the big screen and I was happy with the space that I did see on the big screen. But as far as the story of this movie, they try to push this narrative that the world would be better without borders, but then they flip it and they say, okay, now how are the characters going to react when their governments tell them, hey, you have to take over the space station. It's an interesting concept, but not the best execution. And by the end of the movie, I feel like the writers towed the line for both sides. Like, oh, we should have open borders. But at the same time, they're like, ah, oh, but you got to follow the rules. And so they had the characters really carefully follow that line. And they don't commit to anything at the end of this movie. They're just sort of like, we can live in harmony. And it's like, well, that's not really the way the world works. So it kind of annoyed me. But that is why ISS is at number six. Let's move on to number five. At number five, guys, we have Night Swim. Night Swim is the newest blonde house horror movie to hit theaters and with Blumhouse you never know what you're going to get you could get something great you might get something that's absolutely abysmal and for me this fell somewhere in the middle last year they released Megan and so it gave me a little bit of hope for Blumhouse in January it's like all right maybe we're going to get an excellent Blumhouse movie and yeah it's somewhere in the middle there there was an interesting concept that they came up with for what why there the horror was happening in the backyard in their pool and I liked that concept I hadn't seen that in a movie before and I won't spoil it here I liked that concept. It was just really how they put this movie together. And then in the third act, it just goes way off the rails. Like Blumhouse does a good job with the first two acts most of the time. It, the good Blumhouse movies are the ones that send the movie home. This movie just didn't do it for me. It goes way off the rails and the characters make questionable decisions that look like they're just trying to set up a second movie. I was disappointed. At number four, guys, we have The Book of Clarence. The Book of Clarence is a movie that I actually saw under the banner of AMC Screen Unseen. And that's where you go in to an AMC theater, you buy a $5 ticket, and they don't tell you what you're gonna see. It's a movie that hasn't yet released, but it will release sometime that month. So you get to see a movie a couple days early, but you don't know what you're going to see. It's always just a gamble of what you're gonna get. I got the Book of Clarence, and I was actually pretty happy about that because it was on my radar of movies to see. And I really enjoyed seeing Lakeith Stanfield in this movie. I thought he did a fantastic job 
in this movie. He plays two roles. In both of those roles, he does a great job. My issue with this movie, the reason it's lower on my list, is I don't feel like it commits to one side or the other. The movie takes place during the times of Jesus Christ, and so I think that this movie will offend a lot of people who believe in the story of Jesus, but I think it will also not really work for people who don't believe in that story because in this movie, while they do some things completely against the Bible, while you might say, oh, one side's really going to like that. Well, by the end of the movie, every character believes in God and Jesus and what's going on. So I don't really know who this movie was made for. I've seen a lot of people come into my comment section talking about there was a lot of representation and we really appreciated that. So if that worked for you, that's great. For me, again, I appreciate Lakeith Stanfield's uh, work in this movie. I appreciated most of the acting in this movie. It's just not a movie that really was for me or worked for me. At number three, guys, we have a Hulu released movie that I was waiting for for so long. Saw this preview back in the summer of 2023 called Self Reliance. And Self Reliance is a movie that's written, directed, and stars Jake Johnson. And he does a great job in his role as this quirky guy who doesn't have a lot going for him, doesn't really ever stand up for himself, and then one day gets invited to play a game. Now, in this particular game, he can win a million dollars if he can stay alive for an entire month. And during that month, there's going to be hunters that come after him. And the whole thing will be filmed and put on the dark web. Now, the only catch to this game is that if he can find somebody to stay with him 24 seven by his side, then the hunters cannot kill him. And I thought that was a really cool concept for a movie. And I thought the movie did really well as far as the comedy goes. And as far as the, I don't want to say horror, but eerie concept that the movie has where you got these hunters after you. And sometimes they do jump out and grab him and it, it makes for a very edge of your seat movie for the most part. You get toward the end of this movie and again, it's something about January movies that just can't send a movie home. And I feel like they wrote themselves into a corner in this movie and they were just like, all right, let's just sort of end it. And that's what this movie felt like. It's just sort of ended. I wanted a little bit more out of this movie. I think if they had sold that ending a little more than I would have really enjoyed this movie. Unfortunately, self-reliance almost gets there and just falls short. That'll lead me to my number two movie for the January releases. And I have to be honest, this is a little bit of a cheat because it's Godzilla minus one minus color. Now they did re-release the movie. So technically this is a January 2024 release and it's in black and white. So I feel like I, I should allow it on this movie, but I will admit that I'm cheating a bit putting it on this list because Godzilla came out in 2023. But oh well, Godzilla minus one, minus color. I had a great time watching this movie. I thought there were certain aspects of the black and white that really helped the movie. I thought that there were certain characters highlighted in certain scenes that it worked that one character was in black clothing while the other characters were in white clothing. Gave you an idea of who to watch on this island. Like that really stuck out to me. However, on the other side, the negative side of the movie, you had Godzilla beautiful in the original color of this movie and his back would light up in blue and it's just gorgeous but in this movie because it was black and white it was just really two tones and so you didn't get like that feeling or at least I didn't get that feeling that oh he's about to shoot that atomic blast because it was just like white 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 blast and I was like all right well I would have appreciated a little bit more color, and I guess overall I prefer the colorized version. But with that said, this movie is still absolutely incredible. It's still excellently made. I loved everything about it, and I had an enjoyable time having an experience with the movie in black and white that I had previously seen in color. Not something I've ever done before. My wife, it was her first experience with this movie. She cried the whole time. The movie really resonated with her. We had a great time watching this movie. That's why I made it number two. The final movie on my list is a movie that even surprises me that made it to the top of my list because I had no hopes going into this thing. It is The Beekeeper starring Jason Statham. Now, the reason I say I had no hope going into this is I saw The Make 2, The Trench last year, and he just gives bad line after bad line after bad line, catchphrase, 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 and it just got so grating, so annoying, and it was just so out of the realm of believability that I didn't even have fun with like, oh, shut my brain off, enjoy a giant shark movie it wasn't even fun in that regard so then you got a movie with him coming out as the beekeeper and i'm like oh it's gonna be pun after pun after pun after pun i'm not gonna have a good time with this movie 
And then what we ended up getting was a 90s action throwback movie where Jason Statham is on a revenge tour to revenge a lady who was scammed. He goes after these people who scammed her out of all of her money. He kills everybody. And it is just an action-packed, great time at the theater. I loved watching this movie unfold. I loved the twists and the turns that it made. Seeing Jason Statham go after people looked believable. It was so much fun. I want more movies like this. Jason Statham's The Beekeeper is the number one movie for January 2024, in my personal opinion. But remember, guys, it's not just about my opinion. I'd love to know yours. Let me know in the comment section down below how you rank January of 2024. Let me know what your favorite movie was. Let me know what your worst movie was. I just want to know. That's what I do here. With that said, though, guys, if you like this video and you want to watch more, don't forget to hit the like button because it helps the video, it helps the channel, and it helps me right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, we got to the end of the January 2024 movies, ranked from worst to best. And honestly, I had a great time making this video. These are some of my favorite videos to make because I get to give you even more thoughts, put them in a ranked order, and then people get to get upset in the comments section. Why didn't you rank this above this? Well, we're not the same person. But people never understand that. So with that said, though, guys, if you like this, you want to watch other ranked lists. Well, I've got all of my ranked lists from 2023 right there. And I've got all of my 2024 movie reviews right there.